Recently, we read in Genesis chapter 25 the story of Esau, the firstborn son of the patriarch Isaac, and the day that he decides to sell his birthright to his brother Jacob for a bowl of porridge. Countless books, articles, papers, discussions have happened throughout the ages, people trying to decide what does this story really mean? What does it tell us about Esau? What does it tell us about the relationship between the brothers? Well, the rabbis say it's really pretty simple. They don't believe that Esau was really all that hungry. He was a healthy young man from a very wealthy family. He had no idea what hunger really was. He just wanted a bowl of porridge. And the flippant attitude that he took toward his birthright showed a callous disregard for the traditions of his people, for his own future, and certainly for the honor of his father. His choice was an affront to his father and to his whole community. And yet he chose to blame his brother, to hate his brother, to desire his brother's destruction. A few chapters later, we see that Esau now has a grandson, a man named Amalek, and it becomes very apparent that the grandfather was able to instill in the grandson that same irrational hatred for God's people and desire to destroy them. Amalek attacked the Israelites, attacked them from the rear, preying on the elderly and on the weak. And fortunately, the Israelites were able to win the battle. But God was very clear, this was just one battle in a long war. I will be at perpetual war with Amalek, God said. And that's certainly been true throughout the history of the Jewish people. In the Bible, in the book of Esther, a blatant example in Haman, who is clearly identified as being of the lineage of Amalek. That same irrational hatred of God's people, that same desire to destroy them. Over and over and over again throughout history, the Jewish people have encountered that hatred. The Holocaust, of course, being the most heinous and hideous example in recent history. And today, the state of Israel faces that same threat of annihilation on a constant basis from neighbors all around. Now, if we had a room full of rabbis and we asked them, who is the greatest enemy that Israel faces today? What do you think they would say? Would some say, the current leader of Iran? Would some say the leader of Hamas? Would some say radical Islam? Would some say historically it was Hitler? I think we would find that many of them would say the greatest enemy that Israel faces today is Amalek, the same enemy that they have faced since the days of Esau. The spirit of Amalek being the spirit of anti-Semitism and anti-Semitism being not just the hatred of the Jewish people, but the hatred of the God of the Jewish people. So what are God's people to do? Well, if we go back to the story of the battle, God tells his people what to do. He says, you have to remember. Remember Amalek. Remember who he is. Remember what he has done. And I believe that that instruction is as important for us today as it is for the Jewish people. Those of us as Christians who desire to build relationships, honest, sincere relationships of friendship with our Jewish communities, we must remember Amalek, who he is, what he has done, what he has promised to do. We must fight anti-Semitism in every way that we can, every time we encounter it, anywhere, in any shape or form. And we must stand faithfully and forcefully with our Jewish friends until the day comes when the God of the universe makes the choice to destroy Amalek once and for all.